Hey everyone, I'm Danny Ornelas. Today, I'm going to show you how you can uh, stop the guessing when it comes to setting speeds and feeds on your tool pads in Mastercam. Um, we're going to cover a few reasons why proper speeds and feeds are necessary and what kind of problems you might see if they aren't used correctly. Then I'm going to show you a couple of approaches you can use to look up and enter this data based on the tool and the materials you're using. And then finally, we're going to show some tool libraries, and then we'll talk more about it during the Q&A afterwards. Well, it's speeds and feeds. They're important. We all know this. Okay. Um, this clip here, I'll be honest with you, it comes from one of our marketing members. I'm, I'm just a machinist. You know, I'm not good with these PowerPoints, and uh, they were able to, you know, get some information from me. You know, you guys all know this information. But we all know this stuff. You know, we have speeds and feeds in our heads. We have speeds and feeds in our catalogs. Our tooling vendors come out. There's tribal knowledge that we have in our machine shops. And yet every day we go through these processes where we're re-entering over and over again the same data. So hopefully with today's presentation, we'll be able to capture some of that, some of that information and put it into either the library, uh, show you how to use like a speeds and fees calculator, or even more importantly, how we go to this extended, uh, start using the tool manager, which is included in the installation of your master cam. So let's get started. I'm going to show you several ways on how we capture speeds and feeds in master cam. The first way, let's just go ahead and create a tool path to begin with. I'm going to select this outer boundary for my stock, and I have a silhouette boundary here. We're going to go ahead and rough that material out of there, and I want to use a half inch end mill. So typically what we do, we'll just go ahead and grab, select this to tools. We'll pick a half inch end mill here, and what we normally do is we'll just pick the tool, assign a name, and we'll just guess at speeds and feeds and say this is about how I want to cut it. We'll select OK to that. And we get a tool path. What we want to do is try to take some of the guesswork out of it. And then another way to do this is maybe we'll just change the library. But one way is just to take a library, type in speeds and feeds, or we may have another library like this library here that has the speeds and feeds tied into the tool itself. So I'm just gonna grab another half inch end mill here. It's gonna remain at 20 and 18 because that's what I selected for the first tool. But for this tool, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say reinitialize speeds and feeds and it's gonna pick up the speeds and feeds that are set internally in this tool. If I go up here and I edit this tool, these are speeds and feeds, surface footage, that are assigned to this tool. If I come back to this tool, reinitialize, I get back to the default, which are assigned over here. Another way we can do this, I'm gonna say, let's search for cut data. Search for cut data. And in this library, there's nothing. There, there is absolutely nothing that we can search. We don't have any speeds and feeds assigned to anything. So I'm going to go ahead and select a different library. And I'm going to grab a tool from this library. Now for this tool, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say search for cut, cut parameters. Now we're adding a little more intelligence and we're taking the guesswork out of proper speeds and feeds based on the material that we're cutting. So this part, let's say we're making it modest stainless steel. And if I go I've got some set parameters here. I'm searching for a minimum and maximum tool of half inch diameter and I search and I get this cut parameter. So if I select it and I accept it, I get proper speeds and feeds. So instead of having the speeds and feeds tied into the tool, what if we said, well, we want to make this part out of aluminum. I would have to go switch to and with this method, or let's just go back to the beginning with this method. I would just have to take a guess at the speeds and feeds. With this method, we have a tool that's set up 
with the proper speeds and feeds for aluminum, I have to go back to the library and pick another tool that has the proper speeds and feeds with it. This method, I have one tool. I don't have to reselect another tool. I can right click and go search for speeds and feeds. Oops, I already had it there. Let's go ahead and search. Actually, I have two of them here. I have one for aluminum and one for titanium. So if I pick the one for aluminum and accept that, I get the proper speeds and feeds. It's kind of high. We'll go back and we'll, we'll talk about how those are set there. So those are the three ways that we can capture speeds and feeds when you're when you're doing tool paths. Now, this way here, if I go initialize again, you know, it's all guesswork. You can also utilize you know, the speed and feed calculator, but this is, you'll have to type this every single time. We're trying to save that data so you don't have to keep repeating this over and over and over again. This way, you know, someone's already taken the time to capture the speeds and feeds per material. This one, we have the definition of a tool, and then we have a whole bunch of cut data in the background to switch it, you know, so the, the, to uh, accurately change the speeds and feeds based on the material you're cutting. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to compare it to my, I got a couple of libraries open here. Let's start off with this one here. Okay. So this is a just a regular mill turn library. And if you look at this, we have 446 tools here. And we can just pick, we've got all kinds of random tools. And if you pick on one, let's go to, sorry, let's pull to look at the properties here. What a geometry. And this is what you'll see when you're in MasterCAM. There's really nothing defined in here. Well, defined, but not accurate to the you know to the material you want to cut there's no material cut data we got some holders you can go to the holder tab yeah. lots of nice holders here okay the other way let's go to let's go to this library here now this library has 31 two assemblies and if we go pick up the assembly and go to the properties for it Within the tool itself are defined speeds and feeds. So if we're going to put it in, okay, there he goes. Let me go edit this guy. We have some speeds and feeds that are tied in there. Actually, you can type them in down here. I'm just used to going to the old dialog box inside of MasterCam. But you can you can enter in some information here. Still, you'd have to if you want to change materials, you'd have to go from one tool to the other. The final way I want to show you is let's go look at this one here. I have a library, yet another library. This one has just one cutting tool. I did this for the example. I have a half inch in mill. I have a holder and I created an assembly. All that you can do was, you know, in, inside the tool manager here. But what I also did was I added three materials. I added the aluminum, the stainless steel, and the titanium. And you can just keep adding all the materials you want. Now, under, under the materials, let's go to properties. Part of what helps create the proper speeds and feeds is by defining the densities and the hardness of the materials. So you notice we'll get different, different data right here. Now let's go to the cut parameters. Now what the cut parameters do, we then have to define what are you doing with the tool and what material? So for this one, we have aluminum. We're going to use this for, for roughing. We've defined this as dynamic milling aluminum. We're cutting aluminum. We're picking the material from the materials we have selected so we can pick the attributes up for the material so we can get proper speeds and feeds. Okay. And that's how all this works right here. So for us, or for me, I should say, it should be for everyone. Searching for cut data will give you the most uh, the most accurate speeds and feeds that you need. Oops, I'm in the wrong material again. Oh, there it is right there. We'll accept that. And we have our proper toolpath. So uh, we're offering access to any tool library shown in this video. And we're also available for downloads on the tech exchange from our vendors. So all of this is touching on best practices and good resources. And this would be a good closing topic.